AQU is a very rare disease with a prevalence of 2 in 1 million. It is also an autosomal recessive genetic disorder, meaning that both parents must have at least one mutated HGD gene, the culprit gene causing AQU. Thus, both parents are so-called carriers or AQU patients themselves. Now, the affected AQU child has obtained two mutated genes, one from each parent. The chances of this occurring are one in three if both parents are carriers. In the healthy child, each of the two chromosomes contains a DNA molecule with an intact HGD gene. The HGD gene, in turn, produces an HGD protein. However, the HGD enzyme requires six HGD proteins, so-called HGD subunits. Three HGD subunits form a disc called a trimer, and the resultant two trimers assemble to form a hexamer to yield the bioactive HGD enzyme. Only this bioactive HGD enzyme is able to convert HGA at its active site with the aid of iron 2 iron 2 malilacetoacetate acetate MAA. A mutation of the HGD gene causes alterations of the HGD protein structure. There are over 100 known HGD mutations. Here we show a mutation that interferes with the trimer formation so that the hexamer structure cannot be formed. Thus, the HGD enzyme is inactive. This is called HGD deficiency. Consequently, tyrosine and its immediate derivatives are converted to HGA in cells such as the liver cells, yet HGA is no longer converted to MAA. This leads to an accumulation of HGA molecules within the cell that subsequently cross the cell membrane and finally get into the blood circulation. From there, they are filtrated at the kidney and eventually excreted out of the body into the urine. However, HGA is readily oxidized by the oxygen from the air or by the addition of an alkaline solution to yield benzoquinone acetic acid, BQA. This causes the urine to turn black, which is the first symptom of AQU. So, for the first three decades, most patients are asymptomatic. In other words, they just have this strange urine. Nevertheless, not all HGA is excreted. Some of it is deposited in its oxidized form, BQA, at the connective tissue, such as cartilage. However, BQA is chemically very reactive and polymerizes. In other words, several BQA molecules join together to form a long chain. In addition to this, other unknown molecules attach themselves to this chain to yield the ochronotic pigment. Once ochronotic pigment is formed, it is taken up by a cartilage cell called a chondrocyte that lies at the boundary to deeper cartilage and subchondral bone. As soon as a chondrocyte absorbs pigment, it sends out signals to other chondrocytes to absorb pigment too. Furthermore, ochronotic pigments are taken up by osteoclasts, bone bulldozer cells, resulting in the loss of subchondral bone tissue. Thus, cartilage lies on top of spongy bone tissue. In addition, the ochronotic pigment also forms a deposit on collagen, a long molecule forming a network between chondrocytes, giving cartilage its structural stability as well as its elasticity. Eventually, all of the cartilage becomes black and brittle. Moreover, osteoclasts send signals to immune cells called macrophages that engulf the achronotic pigments, causing them to be shed off. This is an example of a microscopic image showing a chondrocyte with an ochronotic pigment. 
The next picture illustrates an ochronotic elbow joint in its final stage. Usually the only solution to overcome this process is joint replacement. Nevertheless, the first joint symptoms are back pain due to loss of vertebral joint space at the third to fourth decade, eventually leading to a total loss of joint space. However, other organs are also affected, such as tendons, ligaments and muscles. Kidney and prostrate stones develop at the sixth decade. There is pigmentation of the eye and ear from the fourth decade onwards, as well as of the heart valve from the sixth decade. Now this is very depressing. So what can you do if you have AQU? The answer is to move to improve.